Senator Dianne Feinstein's office confirming that she suffered from complications from singles, including encephalitis or swelling of the brain and Ramsey Hunt syndrome, which affects your facial nerve. CNN's Manu Raju and Dr. Sanjay Gupta are with us. Manu, um, what are you hearing from sources and from Senator Feinstein's office about her diagnosis? Well, Senator Feinstein's office has not provided many details about her condition ever since she was gone in mid-February, suffered the shingles, uh, had shingles, and the 89-year-old Democrat was gone for several months, didn't return until last week, and there still has not been many much information. Then the New York Times reported earlier today that she did have broader complications related to shingles, encephalitis, and the Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. I heard from a source familiar with the matter who afterwards who confirmed the senator had that those di was diagnosed with those two issues. Then she talked to our colleagues on Capitol Hill, Kristen Wilson and Jessica Dean, and she denied having any broader complications, simply saying she had a very bad flu. Then after that, Jake, her office put out a statement confirming the New York Times report, saying the senator previously disclosed that she had several complications related to her di shingles diagnosis. Those complications included Ramsey-Hunt syndrome and encephalitis. While the encephalitis resolved itself shortly after she was released from the hospital in March. She continues to have complications from Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Now, there have been questions for some time about Senator Feinstein's health. She passed up being the president pro tem, which is in line to the presidency because of uh, her condition. She also was pushed aside by Democrats and not become the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee because of questions about her fitness to serve in that position. But when I asked senators today about whether they believe she has continued to fit and serve as senators, they sized up that question. We're all human and we all have health issues and right now she is performing as a United States Senator doing her job. If you think she ought to resign and you think that these things that they're all saying uh, anonymously are true, then by God, go to Amazon and buy a spine online and stand up and say it Public. Be a man or be a woman. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, and Jake, uh, as I asked the Democratic leader Chuck Schumer uh, right out of the Democratic lunch today whether or not he was aware of Feinstein's diagnosis, diagnosis he declined to comment. And the Senate number two Democrat who chairs the Senate Judiciary Committee, Dick Durbin, told me that he was not aware of any of these issues, Jake. Yeah, and as you, as you alluded to, um, uh, Manu, there, there have been questions about her cognitive abilities for several years now. Um, Sanjay, how, how difficult is it to diagnose encephalitis, and, and what does that mean? What does Ramsey-Hunt syndrome mean? Yeah, so it, it can be challenging to, to diagnose encephalitis. Encephalitis basically means inflammation of the brain. People often hear meningitis. That is inflammation of the layers, the outside layers of the brain. But with encephalitis, you're actually getting swelling in several different areas of the brain. Now, it can be challenging to diagnose. Usually you have some suspicion. As Manu mentioned, she had diagnosed shingles. Shingles can sometimes lead to uh, uh, encephalitis, inflammation of the brain. You have several tests that you'd start to do to try and figure that out. Imaging tests, for example, uh, EEG, electroencephalogram would be another test, and even a lumbar puncture where you'd actually look at fluid that bathes the spinal cord and the brain and see, look, is the virus in there? Are there indications? that there's a swelling and inflammation around the brain, that's how you'd make that diagnosis. Sometimes it's hard. People have fever, they may have headache. Sometimes those symptoms will resolve, but people may be left with memory sort of difficulties. So it can be challenging, Jake. And what about Ramsey Hunt? What, what is that? So, so when someone has shingles, and a lot of people know what shingles is, typically it's a virus that you may have had chicken pox when you were a child even. The virus doesn't leave your body it stays sort of hanging out around nerves. At some point in adult life, it can get reactivated. That's shingles. If that reactivation occurs around the face, and specifically around the facial nerve, and I think we have an image here of what the facial nerve sort of, yeah, see the yellow area there, the facial nerve. If that becomes inflamed as a result of the virus, you can develop weakness of that side of the face. You can develop lesions even inside the ear, difficulty with hearing, difficulty with vision. It can be inside your mouth. It can be very painful. People who have had shingles know how painful it can be. Imagine that same sort of thing happening on your face and possibly affecting the nerve that gives your face its movement. 
Um, it can resolve if it's treated early and it's typically treated with steroids and antiviral medications. If it's recognized early and treated early, people can resolve, but it can take a while. By the way, Jake, just quickly, it's different than Bell's palsy. With Bell's palsy, you can get similar symptoms. We don't always know what causes Bell's palsy. With this, uh, Ramsey Hunt, it's almost always that virus that causes shingles. All right, Dr. Sanjay Gupta and Mani Raju, uh, thanks uh, to both of you. Let's uh, talk about this my political uh, panel. Uh, so let me start with you. So um, one of the issues going on here is, well, first is the issue that she doesn't want to step down, and apparently her staff doesn't want her to step down, and no one in her family wants to make her step down. Uh, beyond that, there is the issue of, like, well, okay, who gets the job? Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a very competitive Democratic primary going on right now in California to get that job. Uh, Adam Schiff is running, Congressman Adam Schiff. Pelosi likes him. Uh, there's Congresswoman Barbara Lee, uh, very favored by people in the San Francisco area. Uh, there is Katie uh, Porter, uh, very popular with the uh, progressives. Um, and unfortunately, all of this is, is playing a role. And also, the governor of California has made a commitment also uh, to fill that slot with a black woman as well. You if, know, if, he get, if, he, if, if he gets the opportunity if to, If he yeah. gets the opportunity to, yes. Right now, I mean, absolutely. I mean, one, you have the question of, as you noted, is she going to step down? Is the senator going to step down? But after that, you're going to have a certain uh, contest here of these different sort of allegiances and relationships that have been built by these different members of Congress already to fill that seat. Um, but first, I mean, I think really the pressure is on some of these Democratic leaders uh, to base on, on whether or not they are going to talk to the senator about stepping down. Um, you talk, my colleagues reported on that story today, and they talked about how this puts Senator Schumer in a certain in a certain spot and really increases the pressure for him, especially with the uh, evidence that we have that there was one person there in, in an interview. Um, one of the senators mentioned, "Well, her job isn't impacted." We do know that she has a lighter schedule of, here. Of course, well. her job's impacted. Of course, her job is impacted. I mean, you have the LA uh, the exchange with an LA Times reporter as well where he was, basically, she did come off as confused and appeared to not remember some of this as well. So her, her job is impacted right now, and it'll be interesting to see how Democratic leaders basically respond to this report as well um, and see if they do ask her to step I, I've heard Democrats and Republicans say it is an absolute tragedy. This is what she's going to be remembered for and not her trailblazing career. Absolutely, and you've heard that for years. That has really been a concern for those around her, for her staff, that this is really going to lead a potential obituary one day instead of all of these things that she's been able to do. And I will add one other pressure point, I think, for Democratic leaders, especially Schumer, is just look at how narrow that margin is in the Senate. One if, vote. Literally one vote. So even if she were to step aside, that makes everything way more difficult. And we are looking at the debt ceiling, government funding, so many more different things. And I will say, completely different situation. But even on the House side, you see it with the pressure for Kevin McCarthy. He doesn't want to get rid of George Santos. Totally different situation. But the margins really matter to these leaders and really motivates them. 